Alright, hi folks, and welcome back to my third cast in a row. Uh, we see a slightly different cast of casters here. I'm going to start this off. Um, this is going to be the finals match of IEM Kiev. Uh, as I said, I'm casting these one after the other in a marathon casting session on my day off. And I'm going to be posting these one per day until they're done. Uh, we saw in the first two matches, uh, stop now if you don't want spoilers and go watch those games. Uh, we saw M5 defeat SK 2-0 using a crazy strategy with a, a lot of, like, we, a crazy strategy that kind of won my heart because I, they picked Shivana and I think Shivana's a terrible hero and I love seeing teams do well with terrible heroes. Um, because my sound balance was a little off, I think my voice sounded extremely strange in those uh, in those casts. So hopefully it's a little better in this one. Uh, I've got my requisite cup of coffee. I have eaten some soup, and we're ready to go for game three. I also cast a couple games of me playing live because I got League of Legends working again on my desktop. Um, and so... It's much more fun for me playing on my desktop than on my laptop when doing a cast. So hopefully that that encourages me to do some more uh, live casting of myself. Anyways, on to the game. We have uh, TSM, Team Solo Mid, versus M5, Moscow 5. Um, and we see M5 snapping up that Shivana again. Uh, as usual, the first pick is going to be a Sona. Uh, Expecial, who plays support for TSM has said that he doesn't know why you would never why you would ever not first pick Sona. She's so good in the current metagame. Um and interestingly we're seeing a Terek instead of a Soraka from M5. Almost always if Soraka was open we'd see her picked. Um so I think I think this is like the first game probably this tournament that Soraka and Sona weren't the two picks or one of them was banned. Um, interestingly, we're seeing an Aurelia from uh, TSM. I haven't seen them play much Aurelia. I, I, I didn't think it was one of Rain Man's uh, main heroes, uh, but we'll see. Um, going into this game, I'm not sure who to root for, because on the one hand, M5 kind of... M5 blew me away with their, their, last, with their match against SK. It was amazing. It, it changes uh, how things work, I think. Um, they focus so heavily on keeping all the jungle camps down all the time, and I expect we'll see that from them again. Um, I do like that a special has got CV here. Um, and I also like that they're not overreacting and banning Shivana. Uh, so, so on the one hand, M5 really impressed me with that, that last match. On the other hand, I've spent dozens of hours watching Chaos's live stream, and TSM are my North American homeboys. Um, so I'm a bit torn. Oh, a Skarner pick. I like Skarner. Um, and I really like Skarner against that counter-jungling strategy because Skarner is so powerful 1v1. Uh, I think he, he rivals or beats um, Shivana. That's actually, that's the hero I was looking for when I was talking about other heroes that would work really well in this strategy is Skarner. Skarner's perfect for it. Same with Maokai. Uh, things like that. Um, and I think we'll be seeing teams move away from the Shivana pick because I still think Shivana is pretty bad, and move towards uh, towards better junglers. But doing what M5 is doing, I think they have a brilliant strategy and maybe not the right picks for it. Um, I really like that Galio pick, although I'm not sure how well he'll do. I assume he's going to be mid against uh, against that Cassiopeia. Um, Reginald's Cassiopeia is obviously very good. He's known for it. Oh, I should introduce the teams. On um, I'll wait for them to, to pick all their heroes. Um, this Lee Sin pick is interesting. I I guess he does well against Irelia. I don't even I don't actually know that. Um, I do like Tarek Kogma. I and I do like Heal on the uh, on the AD. I really like the way teams are doing this. They realize they need a CV, so they get the CV on the support, but they put the heal, because you really want to heal in the bottom of your lane on the AD carry. I think that's really good. Um, especially in really high-level play where you're not going to be like going for kills with an Ignite. 
Uh, so now that everyone's picked their heroes, I'm going to pause real quick and introduce the teams. So for TSM, we have Chaos uh, on Graves. We have Expecial on Sona. We have Reginald on Cassiopeia. We have Rain Man on Aurelia. And we have the Odd One on Skarner. And for M5, um, we have actually a bit of a, a name change. I assume that's the same player. Um... Anyways, we have uh, Nayasha Yatashu uh, on Galio. We have Gosu Pepper on Tarek. We have Genja on Kogma. We have Darian on. Um, actually, oh, we have Darian on Shivana, and we have Diamonds on Lee Sin, or maybe they haven't finished swapping. Uh, the last couple games, we've seen Diamonds on Shivana. Um. So maybe they're doing a jungle Lee Sin and a top lane Shivana. That would be kind of cool. A, a switch up. Um, I'm not actually sure. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a bit and get to the loading screen. Where we can start the game. Uh, it looks like they're not showing us a loading screen. They are showing uh, all the players talking. Here's TSM all lined up. And... Okay, here goes. And yeah, it is going to be a top lane Shivana. Um... I didn't know you could change your name in the middle of a... Of a tournament. Um, and I assume that's not a sub. Actually, I should have looked that up before entering. I, I haven't watched any of these games. I haven't, um... This is coming as much of a surprise to me as it will be to you. Uh, and as you can see, I do not control the cameras. I'm using the r official recorded cast. Uh, think of this, again, like you're watching Korean StarCraft. Uh, you don't get a full replay, you just get what the what the Korean commentators were looking at at the time. But the official law commentators are pretty good about catching things, so we shouldn't be missing too much of the action. Um, probably less than you would if I were manning the controls. Uh, we see M5 all running in and then recalling. That's kind of weird. I don't know what that's about. I guess... I guess they decided not to take the blue and just run to the lanes. That's actually a, an interesting thing. They're, they're deferring from their usual uh, plan. What they've been doing is getting one of their solos, one of the other team's buffs, uncontested. Uh, that we saw them do that against SK with great success. It gives uh, gives the lane such a huge advantage. Uh, interestingly, <coughs> TSM not pulling the double golems back and forth. So Chaos took a lot of damage from those. Uh, you can you can take no damage for doing those. I guess they just wanted to do them quicker and more safe. Gonna take this moment to drink some coffee while the teams get into position and do some jungling. Um, so we see Rain Man's Aurelia against Shivana. I assume Aurelia should wreck that lane. Uh, she hits harder. She has more sustain. Um, she has CC. I, I actually, I don't think there's a, any advantage that Shivana has there. Um, Cassiopeia against Galio. Uh, depend, it really depends on where the blue buffs are. Uh, whoever gets a blue buff is going to win that lane. Um, but I think with if no one gets a blue buff... Uh, Galio, or I think Cassiopeia has a slight advantage. Anyways, we see bottom lane getting ganked. Good flash out from Expecial, but they did force a flash. So that's nice. Early ganks from Lee Sin are tough. Yeah, and we can see Cassiopeia starting to bully Galio around. Galio needs to level up a bit before he can handle that lane. Oh, or get a Lee Sin gank. Skarner's pretty happy to just free farm for a bit. Um, while Lee Sin misses ganks. If he can get some early, like uh, early gold per five, I assume he's going to make a Philo out of that regrowth pendant. Uh, then he's going to be able to scale pretty well. Yeah, there we go. There's the philosopher's stone. Um, no one has anything odd in item builds. Uh, although you can see Sono's already used all her wards. I assume she had a a vision ward and. Uh, a pink ward and a green ward. Um, and they're all down already. You can see one up there. So 
She placed a ward, and Vision warded one of Tarek's wards, I guess? No, they placed a, they used a brush ward. So they're they're really looking for aggressive lane control here, which is good, because Kog'Ma scales better late than Graves does, so you need to win that lane pretty hard. On the other hand, Graves' Sona has the tools to win a lane really, really hard. I'm actually not sure about this Tarek pick as opposed to a Soraka. I guess they feel like the stun is needed for more defense. Um, but I feel like Soraka would let them play the defensive farming game better. Um, so I don't know why they didn't go for it. As well, they've shown that they really like global presence. Like they, they really like that that gangplank in uh, in that SK game was crucial to their success. Uh, and Soraka gives you some of that, of course. Um, Lee Sin kind of hiding around, looking for a gank on Rain Man, but Skarner's also there, so we're going to get a 2v2. In comes Lee Sin, in comes Skarner, um, and both teams just back up a bit. On the other hand, Odd One is pilling, and Lee Sin's still there, so he might be able to come in. We've got... A bunch of laning bottom. This is a much less exciting game than the uh, the SK games were. I mean, at this point in the SK games, M5 had been uh, through SK's jungle like four or five times. Um, I think they're showing a lot more respect to TSM, probably because they haven't played as often, so they're not... Like, uh, M5 and SK obviously know each other really well. They're the top of the European scene. Um... And while TSM and M5 have played before, just very much not as often. We can see Galio's shield is helping him, but um, Arginald is doing pretty well. Oh, that there's a flash in. He thinks he got it, but he won't. He won't get that kill, that health pot. Good save. Um, Lee Sin was there to shield, I guess, if, if he needed it, but he didn't. Um, still, that will give... Uh, give Reginald a CS advantage in this lane. Um, he's already up by 10, and he's going to cost Galio a bunch more at that turret and maybe get to Rome. Um, so good start from TSM so far. Uh, they're up 4k. They're winning in CS in every lane. Um, this game's looking good for them. This is uh, the Grand Finals, of course, so whoever wins this takes home the prize. This set takes home the prize. Game one of the three-game three set. Um, and yeah, so as I said, whoever got the blue buff is going to be really ahead in this lane. Uh, Cassiopeia got the blue buff. Um, Galio's still in a creep, but I think Cassiopeia got the big wraith which is the important one, since the small jungle creeps no longer give gold or XP. Uh, they're barely worth killing, except that then the big ones don't respawn. Lee Sin coming in, but Skarner's actually in position, uh, and they're giving it away. Skarner's moving in. I don't think they'll get a kill without a Lee Sin ult. Yeah, and Skarner's going to be able to maybe pick off Lee Sin? No. Uh, maybe they can get the Kog'Ma, though. Nope, good slow from Kog'Ma, and they decide not to pursue that. I think they could have chased a little more. I think they'd have gotten a bunch more free damage on Kog'Ma. Um, but they didn't know where Shivana was, so maybe they were worried about a teleport. Uh, she, wait, she doesn't have teleport. Maybe they were worried that she had transitioned? I don't know, actually, what they were worried about. Maybe a teleport from Galio, who does have teleport, although it's down. Um, we see a... Uh, some CVs into aggressive wards in the jungle. Uh, they've obviously been timing the blue buff, but uh, M5 CVs, and then they're going to be able to take their own blue buff pretty easily, since no one on TSM is in position to counter jungle that effectively. I really like what Reginald is doing there, grabbing those wraiths. Keeps him ahead in the lane. Um... His CS lead has not really increased. It's uh, 62 to 54, so 8 up. He was uh, about 12 up earlier. And then threw a wave into Galio's tower, so... I actually wonder about that. It seems to me like it should be increasing. Looks like Galio forced, uh, forced an ult there mid uh, with his ult. And so Galio's going to be able to catch up a bit on CS now. 
And uh, like I said, whoever has the blue buff is going to be winning that lane. Um, still no kills, but a bunch of pressure put on each lane. Uh, M5 has managed to swing the gold advantage back around in their favor. Um, how did that happen, actually? Looks like they're still down on CS. Uh, did they take Dragon when the commentators weren't looking? It's hard to watch the minimap and what the commentators are looking at. Um, but I think they must have. Uh, in order for the gold advantage to be back in their favor. Well, nah, maybe not. Yeah, it looks pretty even. Um... We'll see. It, I can't really tell on the minimap icon. Anyway, so there was a big fight there um, while I was talking about the dragon, and actually, unfortunately for TSM, they lost a bunch of... they took a bunch of hits. They walked through Shivana's fire for a really long time. I'm actually going to back up and do that fight a little more justice than I did. Uh, so it's it starts with uh, M5 trying to counter jungle. Um, obviously, they're trying to... Like I said, control of the blue buffs is extremely critical. Um... And Shivana does kill neutral creeps really fast, so they get that. Uh, TSM comes in. Uh, flash for a slow from Rain Man. I don't know about that play. Uh, and we get the Ignite, and then Galio just flashes over the wall after Reginald has gotten really low. Um, and blown his ult on the Galio. Yeah, that that was a sloppy fight. And then they walk through Shivana fire for a really long time. Now, Rain Man does get a, a really cool... Uh, jump onto Galio to finish him off, but two for one there really stings. That's going to give them a pretty solid advantage. They can do Dragon now or something. Um, Skarner getting some farm mid. He's uh, probably going for a Heart of Gold and then a Fast Shirelias would be my guess. Uh, TSM really likes Shirelias, as do all good teams these days. Shirelias is uh, probably the number one... Shirelias and Riggles are probably the number one items in League of Legends right now. The, just the most important ones. Um, way back in the day, that would have been an Aegis or something. Aegis has still gotten a lot, but Shirelias has replaced it as the item that every team needs at least one of. Probably two. We actually haven't seen a Riggles. Oh, there's the first one. Uh, as I say that, um, there's the first Riggles for uh, for M5, and that actually gives them a fair amount of advantage. And there's the second Riggles on the Shivana, uh, giving them a bunch of free wards. Um, Chaos getting chain stunned down, and he's he's dead. A uh, good teleport from Galio behind him. Always difficult when you're out on your own like that. Reginald trying to do as much damage to Lee Sin as possible. Um, really well-placed pink ward there. Uh, lots of, uh, psychic ward- psychic counter-warding. Um, and they're zoning out Reginald, and then they're gonna take the dragon. Which will be the first, like, really big lead that either team has gotten in this game. But this will put M5, uh, quite a bit ahead. Uh, M5 saw that ward placed that Odd One just slapped down. Um, they could counter ward it, but I don't think it's very important to to them that TSM not have that vision. Uh, the ones where you really want them to not have vision are like dragon and uh, lane approaches, not middle of the river. So we see um, Kogma has a kill and is slightly behind Graves in CS, but the kill really matters. Um, he's got way more gold overall with that kill on the dragon. Uh, Shivana has her first two, uh, serious items with the Riggles and a Phage. Um, no one else has really gotten us an important item yet. Um, Irelia has not finished her Riggles. She did get dodge boots, though. Uh, okay, there's the Riggles for Rain Man. Um, Galio's gotten his Merc Treads Chalice, so that's an important item. Um, but Graves just has attack speed boots and a pickaxe. And some Dorn Blades. Um, so we're seeing mostly Shivana has... Uh, mostly on Shivana, the items are starting to stack up. Uh, important items. I expect she'll be getting Dodge Boots next. Um, but it might be Merc Treads. We'll see. 
I shouldn't say dodge boots because they're not dodge boots anymore. Of course, this this game was played um, pre Sejuani patch. I actually can't remember if dodge boots were changed in the if the tabby were changed in Victor patch or Sejuani patch. I think the Sejuani patch. So these boots actually still do give you dodge. Um, it's interesting to me that we haven't seen an Ari or a Trindamir pick in any of the three games that I've cast so far, or Ben. Uh, those heroes were widely considered extremely strong before they were nerfed in the Sejuani patch. Uh, but neither team seems that interested in picking them up. Um, Rain Man trying to go head-to-head with... Uh, Shivana, who has better items than her, and also that burn skill. Uh, that's silly. He should be focusing on harassment with his stun. Uh, Shivana almost cancels Odd One's blue pill. But as it is, they just get a free ward out of Odd One's blue pill there. Um, Reginald stacking Dorn's rings, as you see mid souls often do. Uh, they... Some really uh, really nice counter jungling again by M5, stealing that red buff. Lee Sin gets out uh, with just a flash and a, and a ward and a dash. Um, and it's not like that ward isn't important. Uh, Rain Man again just right clicking, but uh, Lee Sin's here. Um, but now Skarner's here, and maybe they can get a kill. Um, yeah, it looks like they're going to get the sh- uh, Shivana. Nope. Really good Galio ult, really well played. Um, really good Sona ult, though. Uh, finally takes out the Lee Sin, but Shivana has escaped on a little bit of health. Uh, Reginald having to flash dodge that, and it, I think Galio will go down here. Um, although, Odd One's running low on mana, and he had to, he had to give up his uh, slow stacking there. He lost it, um, so Galio escapes. I guess he missed one of his Qs. I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, though, Rain Man pushes the creeps in, uh, which is going to cost Shivana a bunch of CS and XP. So, uh, TSM picking up a kill there and getting some free farm time for Aurelia. So really good. Losing some free farm time. Uh, Galio gets some free farm time while Reginald has to base, but at least they're not losing the XP for that because... Skarner managed to make it in there in time. We have a red buff on Cassiopeia, which is not the buff that she wanted, but she'll take it, you know. Uh, It's better than nothing. Galio looking like he's going to get an Abyssal here. Um, I don't know about that. It's mostly physical damage on... uh, I mean, I know Galio scales with magic resist, but it's still mostly physical damage on TSM. Um, Kog'Maw's got his Wriggles also, and is going for a Zeal. Uh, M5 seems to really like this Wriggles Triple Doran attack speed... Uh, Wriggles Triple Doran Zeal build. Um, which, you know, I like that build too. I think that's a pretty solid build. Um... Because you do get a lot of damage from this. I, I tend to prefer damage items before zeal, but if you're going to get... Uh, it, like, if you need the early game so much that you're going to get triple door and wriggles, um, and in, in high-level play, getting really strong early is often the name of the game, um, then you don't need a damage item because you've got so much from just your, your low-level items. You don't need an infinity edge or whatever. Uh, and you can just get that zeal for the maximum mid-game strength. So I'm, I'm sold on that build. I like it. Um, still no Shirelias from Skarner, but I assume that's his next item. He actually went Merc Treads first, uh, which makes sense. Um, as I said, uh, Tabby on Irelia, she's going to get a Phage, but she's a uh, fair amount behind... Shivana, even though she's ahead on CS, uh, just because of that dragon. M5 is doing another dragon, and it looks like we're setting up for a dragon fight. Casting like five games in a row is starting to hurt my voice. Um, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to man right on through this. 
looks like this fight will probably determine the winner of the game. I mean, there there's room for for error, obviously, but uh, this is going to be a really important fight if it happens. If not, it looks like TSM might have to just seed the uh, seed the dragon here. Um, but I, I don't think they can afford to seed the dragon. I think they have to try to fight. It's going to be difficult for them, though, because there's a lot of AoE on the other team. Um, there's a, an interesting Graves ult, which missed. Odd one goes down right away. Uh, Tarek was going to die, but I don't think that's that important. Lee Sin gets to dash out. Shivana tanking a lot of damage. Kog'Maw now in front, but has a Galio shield on him. Um, and yeah, so Kog'Maw with a kill... Shivana with a kill, um, and that's that's going to be huge for M5. They also got that dragon. They're going to be able to base. They're probably taking bottom turret as well. That's a huge victory for them. And they set that up just by um, TSM focused on someone who then just had to back out. Like They focused on Tarek. Tarek walked out. They focused on Shivana. Shivana walked out. They focused on Lee Sin. Lee Sin dashed out. Uh, TSM was never able to get uh, anyone focused down. Wow, okay. Um, and the casters missed that, and I missed that, because who expected Kog'Maw to 1v1 Graves uh, with no one else there? Um, I mean, certainly not Chaos. So he goes down. Uh, despite the 7-2 to two kill advantage and uh, two dragons for M5, TSM has actually managed to keep uh, within 2k gold, although that's going to change a little bit when this uh, tower goes down. Um, I'm actually not sure how they're managing that. It, certainly, they have more gold per 5 items on the team, so that helps a lot. Um... Cassiopeia still doesn't have her will, so that's bad. Uh, Graves, still no Infinity Edge, uh, so that's not good. Uh, whereas on on M5, we've got uh, Finished Abyssal. Um, Kog'Maw hasn't shopped yet, but when he does, he's going to get a pretty major item, uh, possibly a full Phantom Dancer. Can't tell quite how much gold he has right now. Uh, when Shivana bases, she's going to get a major item. Yeah, she gets that giant spell there, um, which is a big deal. She also has that uh, Null Magic Mantle. I really like that early Null Magic Mantle. It helps a lot uh, for these team fights. Just getting a little bit of MR, and then she'll turn it into a Wit's End later. Um, once again, M5 showing spectacular control over the buffs. Uh, that's just that's really how they've been winning these games. Is just by having total control over uh, the jungles. Um, it was more pronounced against SK, but it's still it's still going on against TSM. Um, and TSM's like uh, teamwork and reactions are are what's good about them. Um, they're not like TSM is not known for their spectacular laning. They're known for their spectacular uh, team play, um, really good team synergy. Uh, Sona getting very low there, won't die. Uh, quick dodge from uh, Expecial. Uh, still forcing a flash is obviously great. Uh, they grab the Lee Sin, but they, they can't. Can they really catch a Lee Sin? Yeah, no. He just wards, dashes out, gets a kick. So, Skarner ult for Lee Sin, ult, fair trade. As well, they got uh, Lee Sin's Wriggles down, I guess. Um... Reginald's still taking these wraiths. I really like that. He's making sure, even though they're in trouble, that he's not giving up any farm that he can get. Um, Cogwell is getting really, really strong. Uh, he, he did, in fact, complete his full Phantom Dancer. Um, and top lane, they get the turret, and they're going to get Rain Man. Uh, really, I, I don't know what TSM were doing there. They, they knew that they were too top. I don't know why they all left. Uh, looks like that flash... Um, Galio ult, a flash dodge from Reginald. Really fun fight there. Really good reactions from both players. Dodging skills left and right. Um, if Reginald weren't quite so behind on items, I think he'd have won that because I think he played it better. He dodged three spells. Galio didn't dodge any. But 
Uh, unfortunately, Galio is just much. Unfortunately for Reginald, Galio is just much stronger than him. On the other hand, he does have a will now, uh, so that'll be helpful for him and for Sona. Um, still no Shirelias on either side. I think whoever gets the Shirelias first is going to win the next fight because they're going to be able to pick a really good fight. Um, I really think that someone should buy one soon. Kogma flashing that wall. Uh, I think Reginald should have cut over the top instead of down along this side because that was a pretty obvious flash. I think they could have got him if if they had paths better. Uh, Reginald being forced to buy a uh, Negatron cloak, which is not what you want on your mid solo. I mean, unless it's a Galio, you really don't want to be forced to buy that. It uh, it costs you so much damage, but sometimes you have to just in order to stay up. Um, Graves has finished his Infinity Edge, so that's really good. On the other hand, Shivana has completed her Wits End. She's got Phage, Giant Spelt. I, I guess that's going to go into a Warmogs, that uh, Giant Spelt crystal. Um, not a Frozen Mallet? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Shivana's gotten really strong. Um, once again, though, Shivana is not... Like, if there's going to be one hero on the other team that you want to get really strong, it's going to be the Shivana. And we see a, a beautiful Flash ult from Skarner, followed by a perfect uh, ultimate from Reginald. Uh... M5 manages to turn around, though. Um, I didn't quite catch who that was, uh, but at least in manages to turn around just in time not to get uh, tagged by the alt for a stun, or they would have got two kills. But that gets TSM a dragon and a big advantage. That kill plus dragon um, puts them... You know, th this is a game again. They're not just getting ground out. I mean, they're still... They're still losing. They're still down 4k gold, which is the probably the most important measure of who, who's winning. Oh, but they picked off Kog'Maw's killing spree. Um, oh. Odd one wasn't quite able to smite that out from under the, uh, under the Shivana. I think he smited it a little early. Um, and now it's going to be on cooldown for this Baron attempt. TSM does see it, and they are coming in. Uh, it's only four. Kog'Maw's not back yet. They could fight, except the Graves isn't there either. Um, really good Galio ult catches out Skarner, and he goes down. He's just been so squishy this game. He has no health. Um, on the other hand, with Galio ult down, and all of TSM's AoEs are still up, they still have a Sona ult. Do they still have a Sona ult? I c actually can't tell. Um, they still have Graves AoE. Uh, they they might be able to do something here. Yeah, they they pick off the Galio. M5 does get the Baron, but Terek goes down. Um, Chaos is doing some work here. He's going to maybe take down the Shivana? No. Uh, he's unfortunately forced to focus on Shivana, who just jumps on him instead of being able to get over there. If he'd been able to get past the Shivana and shoot the Kog'Maw, uh, that, that fight would have been totally won. Um... <laughs> Really fun brush camping from Reginald. He's going to go down, though. Uh, if I were him, I'd have turned around right there and just, like, tried to juke backwards. Um, you should almost always try to juke a Kog'Maw explosion, because sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Um, but it is nice to see Kog'Maw get kills from his passive. Uh, we do see, see an alt from Skarner, but Shivana's not afraid. She's just going to 2v1. She just straight up kills Chaos. Uh, Sona's going to slow, and they're still not going to be able to get her. Shivana's super strong right now. Um, Chaos got in way too close there. He wanted to get uh, the extra, the bonus damage from his buckshot, but um, he should have just been further away shooting. It would have worked out much better. Rain Man going bot to farm. While we're watching him farm, I will drink more coffee. I'm such an addict. People always talk about how we have a culture that is addicted to oil, but I think that the actual liquid we're addicted to is coffee. I mean, I don't own a car, I don't have to spend money on gas, but my god, do I drink a lot of coffee. Um, M5 picking off those wraiths. 
uh, Galio with that Oracles. I really like Galio with the Oracles. Um, Galio with the Australias, so that's nice to see. Uh, and Skarner finally got his. If they'd had that earlier, I feel like um, maybe he should have skipped Mark Treads for it. Uh, because if they'd had that earlier, I think a lot of those fights would have gotten would have gone better. Um, so you have very similar builds from Aurelia and Shivana, only Shivana has 5 kills and 30 more CS. Um, so Shivana's finished that Warmog, she's going Atmas. This will presumably be a Frozen Mallet, but maybe a Triforce, who knows. Um... I do like that Shivana build. I like the order in which she gets the items. I like going uh, Riggles into Phage into Giant's Belt plus Null Magic into Wit's End into Warmogs. Like, just getting all the components before finishing any of the items. Because most of those items are mainly good because the components are so efficient. There's a Shirelia's, and so this is what I'm talking about, how Shirelia's is so important. That initiation is fantastic. Uh, Galio getting hit, Kog'Maw not taking any damage, uh, they really needed to focus the Kog'Maw harder, and they need to turn onto that Lee Sin now, stop focusing the Shivana. Yeah, they, they spent way too long hitting the Shivana. if they'd turned onto the Lee Sin earlier, they could've got that kill. Um, and Kog'Maw just was unopposed throughout the first half of that fight, so there's an ace for M5. Um, and they're going to be able to take down bottom inhibitor and uh, maybe mid turret. I don't think they'll have time to go for the win. Skarner's almost up. Sona will be up shortly. And they're going to take a bunch of damage tanking this turret. Um, yeah, it's going to take them a long time, but they will get this inhibitor. Skarner can't stop them by himself. If he tries, they'll just kill him. Uh, Skarner and Sona can't stop them stop them by themselves. Either. Um, Brain Man's finished his, uh, his Warmogs. Reginald has a Quicksilver. Um, Chaos has a Vamp Scepter and a Zeal. Skarner got a Chain Vest, so that's not going to be that helpful at the moment. On the other hand, Shivana got an Atmos, so now she's insane. Lee Sin finished his Aegis, uh, so the with um, Shirelia's, with uh, Aegis, with Abyssal Scepter. There's so many aura items that team fights become even harder for TSM. Even with the uh, very strong team fight power of Cassiopeia, um, Cassiopeia is not that strong right now. Uh, whereas, uh, and they just don't have the aura items to compete. Um, both teams have similar amounts of AoE. M5 playing it safe and just picking up another dragon. Their Baron's out now, um, so Baron will be up fairly shortly. Uh, but now they can just, with the map control they have, um, Galio has an Oracles and stuff, they should be able to just uh, slowly grind out this game with just gold advantage. Um, bottom Inhibitor obviously gives them a lot of map control as well. They didn't quite manage to take that mid turret. That mid turret, still standing, is uh, TSM saving grace right now. It's the only thing that's giving them any kind of map control. If it goes down, this game will be over completely. As it is, they still have a chance, although it's a serious uphill battle, obviously. Um, Kogma has just purchased his Infinity Edge. That is uh, really bad for them, of course. Um, Lee Sin's getting towards his Warmogs. He's not got that much gold, though. So he wasn't able to finish it quite. Uh, Galio got a needlessly large rod. What M5 should be doing here is exactly what they are doing, um, using the fact that they're stronger to siege down the turret uh, while clearing wards and making sure they have vision everywhere. When they see Rain Man top, they can just pick off mid-turret. And with mid-turret down... TSM has more or less ceded all map control. Um, as the commentators are showing us here, uh, they have no vision. So all the vision that you see on the map right now, that's M5 vision. Uh, TSM can see that. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what... Uh, they're placing wards over their own wall, 
which is important. That's really good to do. Um, M5 waiting for Baron to spawn. They timed it. A l they could have maybe timed that a couple seconds more efficiently, but it's not. It's not important. TSM can't contest this. Uh, and they got it super fast because Kogma is really, really strong. Kogma does Baron faster than anyone else in the game, except maybe Karthus. Um, so they knock down that Baron. Kogma is going to push in mid, uh, and then they're going to transition top. Uh, I like that uh, the the split push before um, before a concentrated push. You should make sure that the other lanes are pushing, especially when they're this close to the other team's turrets. Um, before going in for uh, for a serious siege, it just means that they're going to have to divert people, and then you'll get free hits on the turret. So they're going to wait for another wave, and when this wave walks out, they will probably send one person to go kill it. Meanwhile, they pick away at this turret, waiting for this, you know, while this wave is up. I got the turret down to half, and we're seeing... Oh, Lee Sin's not actually walking over there. Okay. Uh, that wave is still pushed in enough that they don't have to go. Um, so they're gonna... And, and of course, Bot and Hib is pressuring, so... Chaox can't be there. He has to be clearing those creeps. It's obviously correct for them to be sending Chaox there, who now has the last Whisper. Because um, that got him his last Whisper. And here's the initiation. Uh, big, um, big Cassiopeia alt, but just so much health and damage from M5. Didn't really allow them to escape there. Chaox did some work. He, he got a kill, um, but he's going to go down now. Even though Shivana... Oh, he won't go down. Oh, okay, he did go down to that uh, the Kog'Maw ult ultimate. Because Shivana can't catch people. That's one of the main problems with that hero. Uh, if someone wants to just walk away from her, they can. Um, and here they're going to go for the win. And they take that out. Uh, they're putting a lot of damage... Oh! <laughs> Bottom inhibitor just respawned and screwed them. And it actually took them a couple seconds to, uh, to realize that. They were, like, trying to attack the... Invincible Tower, uh, but they still have plenty of time, and, the, and that's the game. So, game one of the finals of IEM -E Kiev goes to M5, um, and we're going to see uh, how whether TSM can pull it back uh, when I cast this just after this, and you guys will have to wait till tomorrow to see that, but, uh, um, you know, wait on the edge of your seat. Anyways... Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel. Um, cheers, and GG.